Let's settle predictive models like plan B's stock to flow model versus reactive models which I use. I have waited four years to make this video. I have a long memory. On November 11, 2021, which was here, remember the fake out in 2021, which as you recall, reminded me of the fake out that we had now in October this year. Plan B wrote this. S2F model predicts 100k average this halving cycle. This white line here. I dumbed that down to 100k December 2021 close because to make 100k average, mid cycle we should be above that average. So 100k at the end of 2021 that would be here. Even if we don't take the dumbed down version 100k by December 2021 close but instead what he is actually saying that the S2F model predicts is 100k average of that halving cycle from May 2020 to April 2024. Since it was below 100k in the beginning it needs to be above 100k later maybe 150-200k at the end to make 100k average. Plan B really gained momentum during that period. Everyone was talking about stock to flow and 100k. People felt that that 100k was a given. In fact it has to go quite a bit above that to make the average that cycle. And with 100k a given that cycle, why not take advantage of it right? I had messages from people who mortgaged their houses, took short term loans with high interest rates and added leverage to their portfolio. And I felt oh this is dangerous and I invited plan B to have a conversation with me about predictive versus reactive models. I contacted him directly and also through this account Luis. My objective was not to put on some show but to try to share my insight that you actually can't predict price like this and show him what I had learned. In response he blocked me on then Twitter. I didn't like that. My account was still small at the time. When you're in a position of strength, be kind to others. That's when I decided that I will come back exactly one cycle later to see who was right. That was in November 2021. Now we're in November 2025, exactly four years later. And what happened? Did price hit 100k in December 2021? Did it become 100k over that cycle? No, that was actually the peak or top of that cycle. And instead price went down. Here is where Larsen line flipped blue at about 49,000. Then price continued down to 40,000, to 30,000, to 20,000 and all the way down to 15,000 dollars before the trend and price actually went up. Based on all the personal stories that I've received, this very specific timed prediction cost more people more money than FTX, Voyager, Celsius, BlockFi, Genesis, Luna, 3AC Capital and all the other bankruptcies combined. Because instead of going to 100k and beyond to create that average, Bitcoin went to 15k. And along this line, people got liquidated or gave up. In the FTX case, they actually paid back, I think, 119% of the US based value, which means that people missed out on the BTC gains that followed, which was a bummer. But when you're liquidated, you're gone. No 119% payout. You get zero. Finished. Put families out of their houses and got a lot of people to quit completely at the bottom. I wish he had taken that collab. I wanted to help him tone down the certainty of the prediction narrative. So how did the reactive model go? Well, we dodged almost the entire drop and then got back in when it turned around and rode the cycle up. So which one worked? Predictive or reactive? Now, if this had all been in the past, I would not have brought this up now. No matter how irritated I was some random day four years ago. It's all water under the bridge. Who cares? I don't want to win any debates. I really don't and I'll soon explain why. And I'm absolutely not doing this to show that someone was wrong once four years ago. My goodness, I'm wrong every day. Just ask my wife. One time my wife marked in the calendar that I was actually right about something that we had discussed as a yearly event so we could celebrate it a year later. Then the next year neither of us could remember what it had all been about so 
I'm still at zero. My wife is always right. Now, I'm only bringing it up because now it's one cycle later and the same bloody thing is happening again. And this time I will not blame plan B. Credit to plan B. He expresses himself more carefully now. Happy to see that. I have nothing personal against the guy, even for blocking me. Everyone's a different person years later. I am not holding grudges. So who do you think that I will blame? Let's come back to that question. In 2021, it was supposed to be what is it average maybe 1.2 million in the current cycle from April 2024 to April 2028. And since we're again almost halfway through mid cycle, we should be there. So I guess it should be 1.2 million now in December 2025 then. Looking forward to that. Let's check 2025 now. September, like clockwork, October 1st, Bitcoin September closed, 114,000, ready for October, Moon November, and Bull December. Well, if you look at the 2025 version, the current cycle is this one, 100,000 is here, it's a logarithmic scale, so 100,000, 200,000, 300,000, 400,000, 500,000 is the average line for the current cycle, April 2024 to spring 2028. And then let's count again 1 million, 2, 3, 4 million for the next cycle from 2028. He has moved this line from 1.2 million down to 500,000. So now that we're almost halfway there, we should be at 500,000 early 2026. And then to make that average, we need to be at almost 1 million for this to become half a million on average. And then it's 4 million next time for the next cycle from 2028. 12 July, Bitcoin 0.118 million, new all time high as predicted. 2nd July, I still believe that Bitcoin average price will be 0.5 million this halving cycle. Yeah, so we saw it right in the picture. Refit of S2F with new data below shows similar parameters and results. Yeah, exactly. 0.5 million 2024 to 2028 and 4 million 2028 to 2032. Can this happen? Yes, of course it can. It's one scenario. But can we predict prices like this? No, absolutely not. If you believe in these predictions, who will I blame? You. If you are believing in predictions again, because now I've showed you that it doesn't work. Perhaps last time you didn't know that. Have people in general taken the consequence of the truth? No. The prediction narratives has more followers than ever. But Larson, it worked so well backwards. Of course it did. Linear regression, it's fitted to the history. Of course it works backwards by definition. Doesn't mean it works forward. Changing that level from 1.2 million to 500,000 this cycle. That is actually adjusting to what actually happens. That's what you have to do. At that time, I invited to debate. But since then, I've also gotten wiser. Many of you ask me now if I'm in a collab, like in DCA or whatever, if I don't agree what someone else says, why don't I jump up and start arguing my point and try to convince everyone that I'm right and they are wrong? I learned this from Plato. This guy. Not personally, because not even I am that old, but I can still read a book. Plato thought that debates were not only useless and stupid, but straight up dangerous. Which is a surprise given he was arguably one of the best of all time at it. Why didn't he like debates? According to him, debates are never about the truth. They are about ego and winning, about outsmarting the opponent. The winner is the one who is the best at arguing their case. And then the people listening will confuse the victory of the debate with what is the truth. You saw it here. Who was the best at arguing their case? Who was the best at getting engagement on social media? 2.1 million followers. CTO a measly 173,000. 10 times better than me. Did the prediction work? Was it the truth? No. You need to decide based on facts who was right and who was wrong. What the truth is, like Plato taught us. You make that decision yourself. 
You're the captain. Scenarios are great. It's when people turn them into predictions that it goes wrong. I'm not saying that I'm better at predicting than him or someone else. I'm saying no one can predict what the markets will do next. We can only react. So if you're out there trying to win by listening to whoever seems the most convincing, you're probably not going to make it. You have to steer your own ship. Today I'm also a bit wiser than I was back then in some other aspects. I will in fact not debate anyone who doesn't risk their reputation when I'm risking mine. I'm standing here with my real name, my face, my lifelong real reputation is on the line. That comes with responsibility. If you have an anonymous account, you can take crazy risks with no responsibility. Because if you lose all your credibility in the end, you can just create another account with another cartoon animal gif. With a great voice cloning feature launched now in DaVinci Resolve 20. Perhaps it's not even the same person running it next year. And you would never know. Again. I'm not here pointing out people's past mistakes. I've done more mistakes than most. It's not about that at all. I don't dwell on the past. The past is only relevant because it provides learnings for the future. Now in 2025, in present time, I'm just trying to guide people right from here forward. This is not a hit piece on plan B. Absolutely not. This time plan B is off the hook. The responsibility is on you. You need to take responsibility to not accidentally base your view on who is best at doing the argument. Base it on the truth as Plato taught us. These are fun scenarios, not predictions, even if that word is used. A reactive approach, as I said already back in 2018, has to date been the winning model. Who knows about the future? Past performance is not indicative of future results. But I do think that timeless education is worthwhile, because there are timeless learnings. I didn't pull those conclusions in 2021 out of thin air. I based it on 100 year old insights. I had read the book. I think maybe the guy probably hadn't learned it yet. Tomorrow is Black Friday and I will extend this discount to a Black Friday sale. Go here ctolarsen.com and press the big yellow button in the middle. It's this price. You get all this stuff. Course indicator Larsen Line Pro 3, unlimited alerts, Discord access, community, pro portfolios, coin stocks, commodities, my Friday TA Pro report and my commitment is that new stuff will be included and there will be no Pro Plus or Pro Max or Pro Ultra or something like that only pro. This will contain everything. In terms of Bitcoin right now. I wrote here in our Discord on 23rd November when price was at 86,150. That's a long week signaling buying interest. Relief bounce in progress. It's this week here that I was talking about combined with a large volume candle which often signals a reversal. Not always but many times. And I also wrote both the Sol BTC support at 0.00141 and the Sol USD support at 127 held and bounced. And this was also on the 23rd of November when Sol was at 132. Someone always writes that I'm making this up after the fact. So I have to show you that I wrote this in the TA report on the 14th of November. Sol BTC is now near the next support at 141k sats and it could become time to look for re-entries. Price at that time looked like this. It had not hit 0.00141 yet. And if you look at the chart now, 141 is here. That is exactly where it bounced. This was not some kind of divine prophecy. It was simply a long-running support level. A generic advice here is that if you do want to trade something on like a weekly or monthly basis, you need to be a little bit fast. The bad signs in Bitcoin were one and a half months ago now. You cannot not react then and then have the right reaction but at the wrong time over a month too late. Because that's where the relief bounce happens. Then you're always out of sync. I did take gamble entries here and here and now move the stops to not risk anything. My base assumption is that a rally in a downtrend is likely to fail eventually but as I just taught you I don't predict markets. 
I'll simply follow whatever plays out. Right now this looks like a relief rally, a dead cat bounce, but if that changes and it turns into real strength, then we play that. Simple. No stress. Don't fall for scams or impersonators. I have only one website, ctolarsen.com, press the yellow button, and I hope no hard feelings from anyone. At least there's none from me. Thank you, Tak. CTO Larsen out.